Good fucking uh, Link M Force Medal uh, Base. Good motherfucking morning, uh, ladies. Uh, how are we all doing today on this most beautiful of uh, Friday mornings? And by Friday, I mean Tuesday mornings. We good? Chillin'? Gucci? Tamaguchi? Yeah? Alright, very good. Very nice. Hey, no further links. A big chungus lost in the queue. Alright. Uh, just now, don't it? Yeah. Uh, no further links. No further links. We have quite a few links, actually. Uh, where? Uh, yes, 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 yes. And here's me, your host for the evening. The God Gamer himself. Your Lord and Savior. Uh, right, 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 right. Uh, Crystal XO, Digital Fruitcakes, MLG Quickscope, Aria, Granberia, Wire, and uh, motherfucking uh, Rocket Pandario. Thanks for seven. Five years from Black Dragon. Hi, Fortune. 60 months. Hope you had a jolly holly. Christmas this year. Feels okay, man. <laughs> nice. I had. Thank you for the five years. Outer Worlds for free in Epic Game Store. Outer Worlds or Outer Wilds? Which one? Generating, 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 Is both of them, generating, 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 generating. All right, let's see what we got today. Yeah. That ship wrong. Bad, bad shit. So you said bad shit. Um, I am ready for school, and uh, these are clip-on binder rings, and uh, here's my outfit for today. It's pretty much just my, just what I wore in the Superman video. Sixteen years ago, this guy is older than most of you guys. Awesome, <laughs> and uh. Is that I will be going out with Sophia by today because I already have a bunch of stuff planned that I'll say to her <laughs> like hello little lady do you want to be saved and I'll go like this and click I'll just, smiling I'll fast click it are you clicking it did you click it yet I'm I can't there. wait for you to click this click 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 how click, have I not seen click, this before click 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 like click that. Oh fuck, I am poor. Who was that? Very good. Safe? Uh, uh. Oh, for okay. some, I mean, we are ready for League of Legends. Look, the Master Rack, Bob Champ, Bob Champ. For some, he's literally faker, feels strong man, greatest of all time, age. I mean, he didn't die. No, when I was 16. Why would it be TOS? I'm trying to think of a reason. 
It's not self-harm. I don't know. I don't see any reason to why it would be. Think of a reason. I mean, he's fine. He's he's even turning off the camera. I mean, when I was sixteen, I realized that. It was who I am. This is who I am as a person. Earth. <laughs> I'm gonna be watching play. Hello guys, today I wanna talk about What the fuck? Fuck! Oh, it's kinda cringe to watch someone have a heart attack, right? Because sometimes you get the little, you know, like the muscle thingies in your chest, which is like super cringe, right? But this is like a hundred times worse, probably. <clears throat> Fuck my throat. Do you like what you see? I love what I see. Would you like to touch what you see? Yes. Yes, I would. Would you like to go out with me? Uh, -huh. yes, I would. Would you like to fuck me? Bingo. Well, then let's see what you've got. It, if you said no further links. Nothing there. Nothing there? Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? Have you been circumcised? Yeah, I have. Why? Well, your doctor must have cut a big portion of it off. No, he, uh, he was a good doctor. Good doctors make mistakes, too. That's why they buy insurance. Hey, don't worry. I got enough. It's big. I want bigger. Hey, I have, uh... <laughs> have you been circumcised? <laughs> Shut up. Fucking uh, 200 uh, acting. Video unavailable. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mr. Chad. Your link is blocked in my country on copyright grounds. Uh, don't uh, link copyrighted stuff, man. All right. How am I supposed to know? Just know. <clears throat> Thank you.
Fox leader to Fox group. Split up. Survey your zone. Fox 7. Put Lancet on deck. Copy Fox leader. Fox 3 headed to zone 6. Put us down over there. Everyone else, stay with the team leader. Seismic charges. Why do they have to animate the fucking deer? Like, that can't be that hard to get. You seeing what I'm seeing? Bro, what are you seeing? Fucking Tetris? What is this shit? Rock is practically hollow. Hell yeah. Why would you want to hang on to that? I feel like letting go of there would be better. King de la Kong, yeah. shit movie. Huh? Um, I'm I'm documenting. Because I am protege mom YouTube canal. Yeah. Um, because I want to show the world. Yo, ciao, cabo. Ciao, yaka. Oh. Yes, yeah, Pojiva talent, Looney talent, talent. talent. Rapiers, Rap Who has talent? No, Who? Looney, Looney, Looney talent. Looney talent. Yo. Money. Money. How much? Yeah. How much? Much. How much? Much. 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 No, see? <laughs> Shave my hand. Shave my hand. See? On your dobre. He's a good boy, man. Come. Shut up. Come, 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 come. We're in Lunik number nine with the mandem. Lunik! Yo! Koshitse! Ciao, yaka, yaka! Yeah. Look, listen, good um Rosumita Angliski. Yeah, I speak English. You speak English? Alright, listen, listen. My name is Mario. Your name is introduce yourself. My name is Kevin. My name is Kevin. Listen, listen, listen to me. Big man thing. Listen. Yeah, come, come, come. <laughs> come, come. Alright, we're walking through now. We're looking for talent. Looney Deviant talent. Alright. Right. Yeah. In the end. Hello, Mr. Fox. 
I am on African internet with a huge delay, so I missed you saying no more links. Apologies, Mr. Fox. Did you really? Cool. Yeah? Yeah. Cool, cool. That's what I tell you, Wait, wait, wait. Huh? Sorry? Who? These guys? These guys? No, no. That's what I'm saying. You speak English? Yeah, yeah. I'm not here to portray this place yeah. as a bad place. Yeah. You understand? No camera. Yeah. I'm not here yeah. to pour this, portray this place <laughs> as a bad place. Yeah. I want to show yeah. that my audience and people Oh, that yeah. people in Lunik number nine yeah, yeah, yeah. is not what they think they are. Ask my friend. Yeah. Idea. People say, don't come here. It's not Look safe. Camera. Don't give nobody the camera. Look yeah. at me. My not camera. My camera. Yeah. Nah. I not camera. So I'm here today to look for talent. Yeah, yeah. My, I'm about talent, entertainment, talent. dancing, Music. singing, yeah, yeah. fun. You get me? Yeah. yeah. It's cool though, man. Good man. Cool. All right, so what's the plan? <laughs> Tom, let's go. Right, we're going to the shop. Yeah, he's not putting his arm around him so much. Like, what? Talent, we're looking for talent here and the purpose of this video is... My name is Andre. 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 Eric. Eric. Andre. 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 Eric. Eric. Peter. Okay. Patrick. Patrick. Patrick yeah? Fabian. 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 Okay, let's go. Where's the shop? Where's the shop? Where's the shop? Where's the shop? My man is porno. Porno. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Come, come. All right, where's the shop? Round here? Come. Upward, upward. Aha, upward. Hey, yo. Upward. Wait, 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 wait. Push gator, push gator. Push gator. That is not gay, of course, that's friendship. Let's go. I never said it was okay. gay. You, you're it was my boss, man. Annoying. You're my security, uh, okay? Security. Don't go projecting on me, man. Don't be done. Don't be done. Say hello to the locals. Don't be done. Don't be done. Press in. Okay, they shot, they shot, they shot. All right. We'll be going. Okay. Okay. That's it. Cigarette, you want to see it now? Alright, I would like to uh, first, I will sort myself out first and then I will, what drinks do they have? First of all, let's see what they have in a shop here in Lunique number 9. So this is the local shop here. So as you can see, they have the local necessary stuff here for the locals. They have beer here. Okay, okay. Pochkata. Pochkata. Prosim. Okay. Drink. Um. Drink. Let's get a drink. What? Piki. Um. Kofola. Mate. Kofola. Yedno kofola. Um. Yedno. Yeah. Yedno. Okay. All right. So it's really hectic here. Wait, 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 wait. Bishte. Bishte. Uh -huh. Yo, yo, hey, hey. Okay. okay. Um, hey. Bish then. It's really hectic in here in this shop. Bro, this is so cancer. <laughs> it's like a PUBG stream. Okay. So much noise. Um, um, drink? Yeah, drink. Let's go. Palenka? We will get Palenka. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Okay, drink first. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. How do I turn this? Cool. How do we restart the game? It's activated! How about this towel? How the f do I play the game? How do I play this game? How? 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 In game. How do I play it? Modern Warfare 3.
campaign early access. The application needs to restart to launch Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Settings will not be applied to the campaign. Okay, proceed. <laughs> Press play. Restart required. The application needs to restart to launch Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Okay, proceed to do that, please. Proceed. Let's do that. Live now. Campaign. All right, there it is. Let's play it. Proceed. Restart the game. Okay, where do I even go to to restart? Or to, to, how do I close this game out? Where do we go for this? How, how do you exit? How do you actually exit? How do you close the game out? You know? Desktop. Quit the desktop. Oh, there it is. It's right there, man. Okay. Deeding, deeding, deeding. Okay. It's all good. Single player campaign. Application needs to restart to launch Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Okay, proceed. Okay, live. Early access. There it is. Let's try back. Proceed. Waiting for a launch into Call of Duty 3. Boom, proceed. Just like that. Oh, Modern Warfare 3. Jump in, jump in now. Welcome to the campaign. Jump in now. Early access right now. Jump in, initiating the launch process. Restart the game and now you can play early access campaign now. Jump in live in front of millions around the world in the campaign early access. You can do it right now. Play this game! How? How? I'm, I'm kind of shocked. I am not doing an NVIDIA update. Reinstall Windows. Restart the stream. Library. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 3 campaign. How to play. Oh, shit. Yeah, I know how to play single player games, but how do we launch the game? Adapt or die. Watch the video. Skip. Would you like to uninstall campaign and free up approximately 28, 13 gigabytes of storage space? What? Manage files. I gotta play the video? Where's the video at? Listening to fucking chat. Are you kidding? Gotta play the video. Scroll down into the Modern Warfare 3 tab. Live now. I see it. Okay. We restart at the computer. What does this mean? This thing pops up. Can anybody, can anybody tell me? Would you like to uninstall the campaign and free up approximately 28, 13 gigabytes of storage space? I don't want to. I ignore that. Remind me later. Boom. Get in it. Right here, proceed. Alright. That's what you get for playing Modern Warfare.
Good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Opinions Think Peace on the Not Binary YouTube channel. In today's episode, I want to talk about a problem that should theoretically only affect less than 1% of the Ultra Kill player base, which is the Ultra Kill player base. I do want to preface this by saying that I don't really agree with the whole take where someone wants to play a game and enjoy it, but they actively avoid it because, oh no, the fan base, the fan base is so bad, I can't even. You don't need to go to Reddit or interact with the fan base whatsoever. You can just play the game and have fun. And this is why I'm saying that for 99% of the player base, this theoretically should not matter. But me as a streamer, I get the fan base forced upon me. If I stream the game on Twitch, I get it in my chat. If I post it on YouTube, I get it in my comments. Like, I really cannot escape it. It becomes a part of my experience whether I like it or not. And that's why I want to talk about it. Now, initially when I play the game, you know, I load in, I get a pistol, I play around with that for a bit, and then you get a shotgun. And at this point, I'm obviously assuming that every weapon has its own use case, right? For example, the shotgun excels at close range, the pistol excels at medium to long range or just precision shooting, and the minigun excels at shooting the walls behind your enemies. The pistol does not fucking excel. It's a pistol. It's a fucking starter weapon. So I apply the weapons accordingly, and it kind of just works. You know, I'm going through the game, having a great time, uh, learning a new tech here and there, and just having a blast. Oh! <laughs> but then, something changed. Hey, what you got there? Oh, uh, I'm playing some so I wanted to grab a revolver. This thing is incredible. It's really precise. It's hit scan. It hits really hard. And most importantly, it feels like it hits really hard. Shooting this thing feels like you have a lightweight tank in your hand firing bombshells at your enemies. And it was also presented as a reward for finding a bunch of different secrets throughout the previous levels. So it feels like you've earned this power. Needless to say, I, I fell in love with this gun immediately. And I kind of just naturally started using this gun a lot because as far as I could tell, this gun was just really effective. And everything was going great. Until I reached Gabriel. Behold, the power of Gabriel is the final boss of the first act. And he's, you know, not like painstakingly difficult, but definitely a challenge at this point of the game. But that wasn't the problem. In fact, nothing within this game was the problem. The problem was the people who play this game. Now, I know, when you stream on Twitch, there's always going to be people who back it with unsolicited advice or minor spoilers. There's gonna be people who are annoying. There's gonna be nerds. And you know, sure, it's annoying, but it's usually not the end of the world, right? But the people who play this game are special. Though they're very special. They're retarded even. And they will do anything they can to let you know that. Please use all the weapons. He's doing a sense, but only using the weapons. Or he's just being a man. It's so boring because I'll be gone. Imagine him fighting the secret in the country with only the one. <laughs> he wants every lock. Gabriel Mew possessed. At this point in the stream, I played the game for a total of three hours. And I have people in my chat genuinely upset with me that I'm not parrying the boss on my blind playthrough. Listen, I know you can do a lot of cool tech in the game. And the game doesn't always spell it out for you. You kind of have to discover it on your own. So how about this? Let people play the game. Do you have any idea how annoying it is to not be allowed to practice the boss? That the very second you die, a single time, you will have 20 people showing up in chat telling you that No, actually you're doing everything wrong because you didn't do the 5 times backflip ricochet yourself Gabriel's good fuck combo But that's just the backsitting, right? Every game has backsitting Granted, Ultra Kill has way more, but at the end of the day, it's just backsitting What made me cope and see it so hard that I actually got off my ass and made a video Is the idea that there's a correct way of enjoying the game Where apparently, the second you install Ultra Kill, you're contractually obliged to arbitrarily First time At least once every two seconds Otherwise, Force and build in a nutshell telepathically remove any dopamine left in your head Because clearly, there's no way you would ever enjoy playing this game Unless you play exactly like that one guy on YouTube who uploads Ultra Kill gameplay every day until he gets a girlfriend Basically after my fight with Gabriel Ultrakill, I became radicalized and indoctrinated into a slap revolver extremist. And at that point, I made a vow to spite Max the fuck out of my playthrough and never switch weapons unless it's strictly needed for a puzzle. And I don't regret a second of it. <laughs> well done, Mr. Bino. Thank you. Go hyper. Very good. Providing you with the knowledge to land yourself in an extremely uncomfortable conversation at a party with a very opinionated acquaintance, we now present The Onion Explains, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. 
The Israeli-Palestinian conflict began in the wake of the devastating violence of World War II, when international leaders came to the sudden realization that the world no longer had a non-stop carnage-filled conflict with which to entertain itself, and decided that the best course of action would be to lock Israelis and Palestinians in bloody, unrelenting combat for their own amusement. Global leaders worked tirelessly to engineer a conflict so intractable that it could last indefinitely with a near constant stream of entertaining destruction for many generations to come. The UN's plan has been so successful that it has resulted in some of the most thoroughly enjoyable displays of ideological bloodshed the world has ever seen, including the edge-of-your-seat fun of the Six-Day War, the non-stop satisfaction of the First Intifada, and the widely beloved series of Jerusalem bus bombings. While the conflict has raged for almost three quarters of a century, both Israelis and Palestinians actually favor an identical solution for ending hostilities. Israeli and Palestinian leaders have made it clear that they see eye to eye on virtually every facet of the proposed solution, including such provisions as seizing all territory, watching the opposition burn in righteous fire, and building a unified nation on the corpses of the enemy and yet they still haven't come any closer to putting a stop to the conflict. However, many Israelis and Palestinians remain hopeful that significant breakthroughs in recent years could mean that their mutual goal of total annihilation of the other side will be realized within their lifetimes. Given the lengthy and brutal history between the two rivals, there will never be peace in the region. But hey, that doesn't mean Palestinians and Israelis shouldn't try. Everyone needs something that gives them a sense of purpose. And if getting together every once in a while to have a chat about ending their fighting is what's going to give Israelis and Palestinians a reason to roll out of bed, then that's just great. Taking up rollerblading, building a ship in a bottle, negotiating a ceasefire built on 1967 borders. All of these are wonderful ways to keep yourself active and healthy. And it doesn't matter if the ceasefire fails to hold and hundreds and hundreds more innocent people die. Because you know what? You tried. And that's what really matters. So forget about the ingrained hate and bloodlust and just be you, Palestinians and Israelis. You're doing a great job and we couldn't be prouder of both of you. Now I understand the conflict. Thanks, Onion. ...with atheism. Uh, ever since I went to college and started my trek into the world of philosophy since 18, 19, I've had a lot of debates with <sighs> atheists. We used to debate atheists all the time on campus. In the philosophy club, we would have constant debates. So I'm very familiar with atheist argumentation. I had a lot of atheist professors, and I even debated atheist professors when I was a, a sophomore. I had a public debate with my philosophy of science professor, at the time. So I'm very familiar with various atheist positions. It's a, it's a position I've interacted with probably for 20 years now. Uh, so maybe 21, 22 years. So I want to be uh, as fair as I can. I don't uh, oh, that's want some to give, uh, mis boys. misrepresentations. I know that there's a lot of different views that, w that fall under atheism. I know that, that some people conceive of atheism as agnosticism, just simply saying that we don't know, we can't know. And then other more hardcore positions that there absolutely is no kind of higher being, nothing transcendental, etc. So I'm going to give my 10 uh, reasons. They're not really in a specific order, just like the other top 10s, why I'm not a Catholic, why I'm not a Protestant. You can watch those videos uh, right before this. Um, and here we want to just kind of list the main reasons that occur to me. So... If you follow a lot of my debates, if you've seen a lot of those, a lot of the interactions that we've had, a lot of the lectures, uh, then you probably know some of these. You've probably heard a lot of these, but let's try to boil it down to something uh, uh, as quick as we can for a, a top 10. So the first one would be the transcendental argument. I think the transcendental argument is uh, the strongest argument for God's existence, and it's because it shows the necessity of God's existence in a logical framework. It can be written out as a syllogism. We've given uh, many examples of that syllogism. If you listen to the debate that I did with Dr. Malpass, you'll notice that towards the end of the debate, I listed a syllogism there that could work. But basically, uh, the, everything that we 
engage in in this world relies on everything that we use in this world, such as uh, mathematics, logic, abstract, conceptual entities. They all presume uh, what are called transcendental categories. Right? They rely on things that are not known or proven through mere sense experience. So we could think about things like temp uh, spatio-temporal relations. We could think about things like the past. We could think about things like objects having identity over time. We could, we could think about things like uh, the transcendental unity of a self, right? That there is a, a uh, self-existing some, something. <laughs> I know that atheists won't say that there's a soul, but there's something that's having this experience of the world that is a unified conscious experience, right? Whatever term it's called you your consciousness, call yes. These are, in philosophy, titled things like transcendentals. They're, they're things that are assumed for the possibility of reason or logic at all. And if you were to deny, deny any one of these, you would actually undercut and negate the possibility of logic or philosophy or reasoning or meaning or knowledge whatsoever. And so that's why they're so strong. In Sweden, we call this word pooping. It's a lot of words, but uh, no coherent fucking point. And so powerful is that they're necessary for a worldview at all. Now, a person can theoretically deny these things and, and continue to have a worldview. A person can theoretically deny these things, yes. you pragmatically speaking, but at that point, you're just being inconsistent. And so when we bundle all of these things together, these transcendental categories that are necessary, again, for cognition, for meaning, for objectivity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, for consciousness, for knowledge, for ethics, and then what we get is a bundle that doesn't stand on its own. How do we justify those things? Do they do? We, do we just say that they are? Well, they actually do need to be grounded. They need to be made coherent, and they need to be strung together, so to speak. On a, um, you could you could think of it like a golden string of pearls that strings together all these transcendental things, and that is all of these transcendental things you're talking about. They're all man-made. All right, fucking ethics, fucking soul, fucking. The all of these god terms right? the of god is mother nature doesn't give a fuck about basis what the, the fuck ground for these things. these things and although it may sound kind of counterintuitive uh it is you can logically show this uh, now we've done this in many many talks i'll put some of those talks down below for a longer presentation but essentially any worldview that doesn't have that as its grounding any worldview that tries to do materialism as its a uh, basic metaphysical or physicalist assumption uh, ends up in relativism, it ends up in self-contradiction at a very fundamental level. So I would say that, <clears throat> that, that the transcendental argument itself uh, is this, the first reason that I would believe in God's existence because it shows that reasoning itself presupposes the Christian I got God. absolutely the nothing reason that I would not be that. an atheist. What the fuck is he talking is about? Is that we utilize all these things like meaning, like logic, like math, and we think about those abstract conceptual things, but there's also other things like love, like beauty, aesthetics, things that relate to the world like telos or causality. Those things in themselves can't be empirically dem demonstrated. They're actually assumed. And so they're kind of like the transcendental categories that I mentioned before, things like They can't be empirically demonstrated. That's literally the opposite. All of those are subjective, all right? What the fuck is this guy talking about? Is he retarded? I mean, I know he's retarded because he's debating fucking atheists for a living. But causality and telos would be, uh, and I would argue that you could even include perhaps aesthetics in that category, right? That it's actually impossible to live your life as if the good is purely subjective, and that's what I think is amazing. It's impossible to live your life uh, as if the good is purely subjective. It's literally like you can just go back 500 years and you'll see different kind of goods. All right. And you can just go to another part of the world in the current year and you'll see different kind of subjective fucking good and evil. All right. So that's he's absolutely fucking is it even such basic philosophical. Who is he? Who is he debating? How is he getting away with debating people ever again after one debate? I don't understand. Assumptions like whether there's an external world ultimately can't be justified unless you have a world grounded in an external being like the mind of God and not in our own subjective experience. And so essentially, these another one of these key assumptions would be that your senses match up to an external world, right? 
Uh, we all kind of assume that in our dialogue, in our discourse, in our daily living. But can we actually empirically verify that claim? No, you can't. It has to be assumed uh, and it can't be empirically verified. Now, how do we prove that if we can't empirically verify it? Well, the first point that we always say is that rank empiricism and most atheists, not everybody, but most atheists are naive rank empiricists. They believe that we only know what's true from sense data and from sense experience. The problem with this, of course, is that you cannot prove that proposition, that belief itself from sense experience. And so therefore it's at a fundamentally, uh, it's at a fundamental level, it's very contradictory. Uh, so much so that it can't even get off the ground. So I would say if you look at things like, again, beauty, uh, beauty relates to form and symmetry. And if you took something like a Mandelbrot set as an example, a Mandelbrot set shows that this mathematical structure, this set based on set theory, uh, is not something that is invented by the mind of man. Uh, and now a lot, not all, but a lot of atheists will say that mathematics is a social construct. It's a human invention. It's not something that's actually being discovered like you were, you know, going out and discovering, uh, you know, Antarctica or something like that. That's right? kind of true. But in fact, a lot of mathematicians will speak of mathematics as a landscape of discovery that, that when somebody discovers something like a Mandelbrot set, they're not inventing. It's, uh, it's more like a pattern that works for a lot of the physics. So we can explain physics. But this guy is too fucking annoying to listen to. Holy shit. Yes. Yeah, we in these motherfuckers. Yes, sir. In the body. Why would you wave like that? Fuck you and yeah, turn sideways, it doesn't even... <laughs> Man, that thing is fucking, oh my god, oh my god. Was that Bruce Willis? I wish I could bring milk and cereal in the car without making such a mess. Introducing the Crunch Cup. Now you can take your milk and cereal on the go. The jumper for the first time in years. <laughs> Oh, all you just 
ran through my crib. Hey, go get him. Why is there a pig here, Gabe? Mate, well, it's a side quest. As you can tell, Hammy has arrived. Hello, darling. What would you like us to do today? <laughs> Дальше, кухня нахуй. Та же хуйня, блядь. Пять, пять, блядь, у каждого свой смеситель. А тут, блядь, вот. А за мной. А. I ain't never seen nobody crack an egg with a spoon. What kind of shit is that? What does it make a difference what I crack it with, motherfucker? I crack it with your big fucking black head. Stop, stop. Non. <rire> le pouvoir de... Attends. Bismillah. Ouah I think I love tacos more than anything. Even Tom? Yeah, even Tom. Wow. Uh, not so funny. I, I pay good money to see this live, I'm not gonna lie. I pay good money to see this live. Three point five K views. No, I don't think so. How about fifty K plus views, huh? How about we follow the rules, sir? And you already know the rules because you are a frequent. Motherfucker.
You like Sopranos? Uh, I thought it was good, but I never finished it, so I guess it became slow at one point. I don't know, like four seasons? Five seasons? I know you're there, Soprano. Well, come on, you're gonna do it, do it. Well, look at you. How you doing, Coach Molinaro? Me, I'm fine. What's that you got there? A bigger dingus than the one God gave you? You dumbass. You know, you ought to show some respect. Why? Because I'm not some kid anymore. No. What did I tell you? Cleave yourself away from them bums you hang with, I said. Well, I'm in therapy now. That's a damn shame. You all listened to that pissmeyer, Arthur Bucco. He was the worst of the bunch. I told you that. How do you arrest him? Doing great. Bucco? Yeah. So what? The exception that proves the rule. Oh, you know everything, don't you? I suppose you blame it on your father when you're crying to that shrink of yours. Every time it's a Sopranos, oh, it's a volume for ants. Of course, even better. Well, my family was different than other kids' family. You know, I'll bet you got that uh, psychologist wrapped around your finger. Well, that's what you always told me I was good at, right? I also told you, most likely, you'd take the easy way out. It hasn't been easy. I see you on TV. Oh, yeah. Some show you put on. The five o'clock news. Then you realize I got nothing to apologize to you for. I am a leader. I got a house with a million two. Two kids. Wife. Do you? Do I what? Have a wife? Yeah. She's got the big house, because I'm successful. You and I know your little secret. You know, I, I only told you I wanted to be a coach, because I like playing ball. But I was just shining you on, because that's what I do with people. I told you many times, Anthony, you were special. You had smarts, personality, leadership potential, all the perquisites to lead young men onto the field of sport. And now look at the stress you live with. You're not prepared! <laughs> You are not prepared. Famous Ivadan. Man. When is it gonna stop being funny, sir? Oh, it's going, guys. Look, look, look. It's in. Go. No DPS. 40k views. Why is it people cannot follow the rules? Huh? 50k views plus. Alright. God damn. It's not 50k plus views equals safe, it's more for the idiots to not think that just because I watch one video with less than 50k doesn't mean that they can put a fucking 3.8k video, alright? Just fucking 50k plus, alright? fucking retard.
the fuck was that? Try to chill it on the song quests, alright, alright. Pixel Warlock for three years, three heals, John Bloom, after. Thank you, boys. Should batch. Skycorp presents a revolutionary new subscription service. The N-Word Pass. For $50 a month, I can be cool and really connect with the black community. Oh look, there's one now. What's up? As a subscriber, you can say to any designated N-Word recipient. You pay the black community monthly, and they receive monthly payments in return. I'm making 10k a month off this. Just wanted a little pass, and let a bunch of white people call me a nigga. Hell, say it with a hard R. <laughs> He's just being silly. The hard R pass is not available at this time. And remember, to only say it to subscribe inward recipients. Trust me, you don't want to be in that situation. For a limited time, Asians and Hispanics get a discount. All other races do not. Sign, Sign up for the N-word, N-word pass today. today. You'll get to say it why you get rich. All right. Welcome to the opening night of Honest Conference, and for the first time ever, one of our industry's greatest creators, the director and executive producer of Bethesda Game Studios. That's right, Todd Howard, everybody. Todd is here to give Hello, us the honest account hey, of Starfield. Hey, Sasipa, hey, Thank you, Jeff. This is Jim my Russell first honest conference, and, and I'm doing it because you course. said how Thank great you, the crowd is here. And re- so, Todd, we love you, and this is a safe space. You can let the truth out now. Why did you want to make this game, Starfield? Why did you want to create a new world? We have dreamt of a game where we can truly break the creation engine in every aspect. Once you've all upgraded your PCs, you'll be able to explore <laughs> thousands of barren planets where a real sense of loneliness will start setting in. I mean, we tried to do something new where you could explore with complete freedom in the galaxy, but something's wrong with the game. Like, and I I can't quite put my finger on it. It can't be all that bad though, Todd. Well, crafting is worse, outposts are worse, companions will constantly moan at you, perks are worse, there's fewer gear slots. You know, I could go on and on. Can you imagine 16 times the loading screens though? Yeah, I wish I could talk about the loading screens. And it's quite an experience, and I know everyone here is very excited <laughs> to, uh, to experience it soon. Um, so Todd, what, what bugs did you bring to Honest Gun? Yeah, it's really cool. They, uh, we've built a 300-person seat theater where we're constantly looping bugs from the game. And what's the experience like? Well, to be honest, it's a, it's a, it's a real nightmare. They're going to need to buckle up, and it's, it's two hours they'll never get back. And I see a lot of things on the internet. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure that's real. Let's move on to quest then. Could you could you give us an example of what that's like? Yeah, Jeff. As an example of a of a quest, you'll go to a star yard, talk to a lady, need to fetch a beverage. Ten loading screens later, and you've got a beverage. That's it. That's the only quest in that handcrafted location. Surely there must be some improvements to the uh, creation engine. Hey, yeah. Just wait until you see what we've done with global illumination. Bucket physics, artificial intelligence, character variation, and our brand new cutting edge 2005 motion capture technology. Add to this, I honestly believe we have the worst UI in the world because, hey, you know, the modders will fix that. And after 100 hours in the game, I still have no idea where anything is in New Atlantis. I honestly have zero clue where my penthouse apartment is. And any Metacritic predictions for this, Todd? We're aiming for a controversial 7 out of 10. Yeah, it's uh, it's such an awkward experience, you know, and hopefully a, a nail in the coffin for the, the creation <laughs> engine, but but uh, Todd, well, you and your team have played such a pivotal role in game development and have created some of our fondest childhood memories. We'll still buy the game and chalk this, this all fate? up to experience, no. and now at least we it's can look forward to Elder Scrolls 6. So thank you for all you've done for our industry, Todd. Everyone, Todd Howard.
Thank you. Shout out to the chess club. Thanks so much, Todd. Really appreciate it. On this conference. You on my mind a lot. Don't need no time. Watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay. Miss you every day. You like my oxygen. Make it seem like the barging down. Got my heart no barging in. From the bed to the floor to the couch. Might wake the neighbors up. Break you in and break you out. In the end, we gon' make it. On this conference. We gon' hit the show. Part two, we don't need no pause. You can't miss me. We gon' get too silly. I thought was hot. Copy my steel. Face the fact that ain't no cap, I'm real. Ain't no cap, I'm real. The plastic bars from a copy my steel. Copy my steel. This is some cyberpunk level fucking bugs, right? A mouth. Quantity. It's worse. Oh. I mean, it, it's not worse because it's Bethesda. We already knew. So the expectations were already lower to begin with than cyberpunk. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Being something is not enough, old man. You have to grind hard until you become the very best like no one ever was. Impressive. Your parents must be very proud. I'm the one who's proud of my parents. Impressive. Hey. Can I take your picture? Sure, yeah. And get out of the way so I can see those spiders. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. You're an embarrassment. These are the years when a man changes into the man he's going to become the rest of his life. Just be careful who you change into. Are you afraid that I'm going to become more successful than you? Quit worrying about me, okay? Find a job, please. <laughs> Right. Hey, Pete, you're probably looking for a, a job now, right? Dad, maybe you can help him out. No, I appreciate it, but I'll be fine. No problem. I'll make a few calls. No, it's not me who's looking for a job. It's the job that's looking for me. I respect that. You're an amazing creature, Adam Man. You and I are not so different. You kill people to keep your job. I keep my job to kill people. We're not the same. Well, do each his own. It's okay, your baby's fine. But it's not my baby. I missed the part where that's my problem. The truth is... I love you. Thanks, I love myself too. Whatever life holds in store for me, I will never let these bitches stop me from grinding. This is my rule, my curse. Who am I? I'm Chadman. Pizza time. You're late. I'm not paying for those. Then you're not getting any pizzas. You're fired. Go. I have just been promoted to a customer. All right, Mr. Jameson. Robbie, there's your page one. I'll give you 150. 3,000. That's outrageous. Done. Give this to the girl. Thank you. Bye-bye. Look at you, Peter. Your grades have been steadily declining. You're late for class. You always appear exhausted. Well, I've been grinding all night long. Grinding is not a major at this university. I'm afraid you should stop masturbating. Why, I thought it's healthy. I meant masturbating right now in my office. So where you been, pal? You don't return my calls. I've been grinding. Taking pictures of- Bro, I am never nervous, hey, all right. Kiddo. Happy birthday. You need it more than I do. Oh my God. Yes, Shut you the can. fuck up. You can take this money from me. 
For God's sake, it's not much. Now take it. And don't you dare leave it here. I'm seeing somebody now. Oh, then you should see a doctor. No, a person, a man. Well, of course, I'm standing right here. I don't know. Hi. What side? Can I spend? I'm sorry, I must leave again. Sorry doesn't pay the rent. I promise I'm a good man. <laughs> if promises were dicks, your daughter would be pregnant. And don't try to sneak past me. I have ears like a cat, and eyes like a rodent. I'm sorry, your credit card has been declined. It's okay, use yours. Okay. Peter, tell us about yourself. Do you have a girlfriend? I always say that girls are for those who want to lose their virginity, and I never lose. Oh, Rosie, I love this boy. Can I help you? Yeah. I, uh, come to see the show. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. No one will be seated after the doors are closed. Miss Watson, she asked me to come. But not to come late. No, that's what your wife asked me last night. You stole my father's love. And you let him die because he didn't turn in the freak. Isn't that right? I wonder if I should help. He won't stand a chance against the three of us. Would you like a piece of chocolate cake? I would like a piece of you. Yeah, stop this fucking train yourself. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? <laughs> but I can. My wife Rosie and I would like to welcome you this afternoon. Today, you will witness the birth of a new fusion-based energy source. Why don't you test it in a rural area instead of the middle of the city? How right you are. Peter was right. It's me. Your friendly neighborhood grinder. Chad Man. Peter, what is it? I'm gonna start grinding again. I'm afraid your friend is not going to make it. What is he making? Oh. <laughs> An omelette. My father. He died, right? He killed himself. This is all so weird. Got you at a homecoming present. It's your man. It's your old ball. Yeah, I figured you don't have the balls. Thanks, buddy. It's an orange. Orange doesn't pay the rent. I can buy you a pizza sometime. Today's good. You're out of the house. He's busy. Oh, no, I'm just here to talk to you, beautiful. What's that smell? That's a little something called nice and easy. What's on you? It's called go away. Hey, Betty. Hey, Pete, you better get in there. New guy. He's trying to sell some photos. I got you this. But well, he got me this. Wait, how'd you get that? I didn't see there. How'd you get that high? I missed the part where that's your problem. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. Whoa. Buddy, love the new outfit. This is exactly what I need to scoop Parker. Give me uh, give me some of that web action. See you, chump. The young Miss Watson is a pretty girl. That's ridiculous. Easy on the eyes, but not on the ears. Her small voice didn't carry past the first row. Believe me, I know. This isn't about you. This is about me. But the movie is called Chet Man 3, not Mary Jane 3. Le monsieur attire une reservation? I'm sorry, I don't speak. But this is a French restaurant, no? But this is United States of America, no. <laughs> I like you. When you kissed her, who was kissing her? 
Spider-Man or Peter? Well, Peter is Spider-Man, so I guess both. I'll never forget that. Because the elephants never forget. I don't feel very well. I'm sorry. I have to go. Oh, don't cry. Wait, turn that thing off. This is for me. Double time. I come before you today humbled and humiliated. I bought myself some flowers. Uh, Jesus. It's not working. I got You're lost in the, the Giga no. Chad. You and me. Hey, Black's not leaving for six years, man. Do the badge. There's someone else. I fall in love with someone else. Okay. T-Rex over with four years. Fist me day. Absolutely. Care reason. She Thank you. There's another guy. Well, how are you holding up? I missed the part where that's my problem. I'm the other guy. What? what? It just started. Bro, she cheated on you? With me? I've always loved her, B. You know that. You were an embarrassment. Hey, Jake, Hupisp, and uh, Fire Phoenix. Thank you, boys. All right, we are we are good. We are good there. We are good there. Dota 2 placement? No. Uh, I got some games. I got, I got a few oldies, but goldies. Uh, let's, uh, let's try some Rainbow Six. I haven't played in a very, very long time. Some uh, placement. Uh, Wreck a phone. No. Do you need you play for this? What? I guess. I. All right. Yes and no. I don't even remember. I have like forty pop-ups coming up. What the fuck? There's no time. We gotta get in for a sniper's down of 40 gigs. Fuck. Matter of fact, matter of fact. Hey, Dan Jabroni, thank you for the five years. Hello, Mr. Forson. Hello, hello, hello. My god. Battle Eye Launcher. Though I won't stop coming and it won't stop coming. This is a mature rated video game. Okay. No. It just works. Thanks, Todd. It takes less time to download than to make a Uplay account. Well, I have a Uplay account, I just don't remember. I hope I don't have to sign into it. I just hope I have to have Uplay. All right, seems to work. Uh, there we go, game capture maybe on, maybe on. Have a look. At what exactly? Well, 
This is how Rainbow dies. Who the hell is Rainbow? 